I'm Marcy Baker and I want to share with you the book that Sarah Nephew and I wrote called Wonderful One Patch. We have some great designs that all have one design repeated throughout the quilt. And here are the tools that we're going to work with. We have the uh, Mini Super 60 which is for smaller designs, but the main two that we have students working with are the 10 inch triangle and then this um, Super 60. And notice this has an interesting shape at the bottom, 120. We showed step by step how to use both rulers because someone might have one and the design might be cut a little bit differently. Let's look at some of the tools that we use and one of them is called sewing edge and that goes on the bed of the sewing machine. Then we also have cutting edge and that goes on the underside of the ruler. And then we also have corner cut and that one we use with the sewing edge to mark where the scant quarter is or we use it for trimming 60 degrees ears off. Let's look at those shapes and how to cut them. And we're going to show this first one, we're going to cut a diamond and you may be familiar with how to cut a diamond that looks like that, which with our um, first step that we would do is we'd cut our 60 degree angle and then we're going to cut with our triangle, we're going to cut lining it up from the bottom, we're going to measure, this is three inch wide, we're going to cut a three inch wide. And so I have this lined up here and then we have these extra lines to make sure we're staying true to the 60 and I cut there. Then with the super 60, we're going to measure not this which is only giving us a triangle, we're going to take and measure it this way because we have this base that's 120 and we can't measure from that. We're going to line up our 3 inch. So we have that lined up here and notice we could cut on both sides but we're going to only cut on that side to get our 60 degree diamond. So that's how we use either of these rulers to cut a diamond which is a simple shape but we also have some fun shapes and one is starting with a rectangle that we then cut in half and I'll show it with the super 60 because they both go the same and in order to cut this on the diagonal we line up here, we line up there and we cut on that diagonal. If for some reason someone has cut a rectangle that is the wrong size and so they lay this out centered and they see that they're not at that corner, quite often they'll do this right here, corner to corner and you want to not do that because you're now not on your 60 degree angle. So if you're not that size, go back and measure your rectangle. So this works, super 60 and the 10 inch works the same way. That's a simple rectangle there and that's the shape that we got. We actually got two of the same. So let's look if we take that rectangle and we sew along both long edges what we can do by pre-sewing and then cutting. We're going to take and line up our ruler. Now I have it going the other direction so I'm actually getting what's called a left versus a right. We're going to cut on that diagonal and because it's pre-sewn we're going to open it up and get a shape that looks like this. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a shape that looks like that because we pre-sewed it and both of them are going to be the same. I guess you can see that. Now let's look at what if we do the long, the short ends. And I have a larger rectangle here. And the book gives you all the different sizes that you need to cut triangles and you don't have to figure that out. So we're going to work with this one but we've sewn the top or the short ends rather than the long ends and when I place the uh, piece on. We're going to have this lined up and here's we've got a slightly uh, short ruler so we could use the 10 and if you don't have a 10 you could use a regular ruler to lengthen that line and we're going to cut that on that diagonal and it's going to look like that and when you open that up you get two pieces that are long and thin like this and that gives us a whole nother design. Because this is a bias, you want to be careful that you're not pulling and tugging. Um, you can use uh, something to stabilize that like a starch or a magic sizing. So with this long skinny strip or uh, shape, let me show you a quilt that uses it. And you may, get, may wonder why do we need to do that because you see rectangles here. But by having this piecing, we're going to be able to sew in strips this way. Our next one would be like this and it comes out easier and better planned as far as the designs to do this long shape. So that's why we have that particular piecing method. 
And this one here you can see is really scrappy, the quilt, whereas the one behind me is uh, very planned. I do the planned designs and Sarah does the designs that are scrappy. So this one here is also scrappy and this is what Sarah designs and what she likes to do. And you can see here that it's the grandmother's flower garden and it's done with quarters. I think you can see here that yellow hexagon is four different corners. So we have lots of different quilts that are in the book. And I want to share with you a pattern that I have. It's called Rose Star. And that is a shape. It's, kind of, it's uh, a kite shape. And traditionally, this one is done with um, set-in seams or Y seams. And the technique I have in this pattern is doing the set-in seams strip pieced, chain pieced at the machine. So if you're going, wait a minute, you can't chain piece and do set ends, I show you how in this pattern to do that. So I've shared with you a lot of designs and techniques, Sarah's method of being scrappy, my method of planning out the fabrics in wonderful one patch. I hope you've enjoyed the information and thank you for joining me. I'm Marcy Baker. Mm -hmm.